Genesis 1 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Such a simple statement to understand, yet one that people have been arguing about for thousands of years. Well, stay tuned today as we discuss the first 10 words of the Bible. Welcome everybody, thanks for watching this video, I hope you and your family are well at this time. If you do like this video, please consider hitting that like button so we can try and reach as many people as possible. Creation, evolution, man this has been a hot topic over the centuries. I'll be honest, I'm not into science that much and that's probably because I was horrific at it in school. <laughs> anyway, I understand that a lot of people are and that's great, however, is science any closer to figuring out how the universe came to be? Isn't science always learning, meaning each generation someone learns something newer than the previous? Well, the Jews and the Christians haven't changed their stance. They've believed the same thing for thousands of years, and they will continue to. They know who created it. There's two important concepts that I want to pick up in what I just said. Number one. Science is trying to figure out how the universe came to be. The Bible teaches who. Please hear me out now. It's a cool thing to know, but honestly, why does it matter how the universe came to be? Plus, we will never really know all the details, so why consume so much time and energy trying to figure it out? There's only one thing that you, watching this video now, need to know for yourself, and that's who created the universe. Why, Jamie? Because if you believe the first 10 words in the Bible, then you're on the start of a journey that might just change your life. That sounds ironic, but it is true. In a second, we're going to jump into the first 10 words of the Bible and discuss what they mean and also um, try and answer some questions that you watching this video may have. If you're a non-Christian watching this now, please leave any presuppositions behind that you may have about this topic Please come into this with an open mind and honestly, I believe if we use logic and common sense, we will all come away from this believing that God created the universe. And when I say use common sense, honestly, I'm not patronising or talking down to you one bit, but sometimes we just have to look at things very simply. Um, so let's continue. The first 10 words of the Bible reads again, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Let's get a bit of context into this passage. The author was a man named Moses. Um, in John 5, 46, 47, um, Jesus said, For if you believe G Moses, you would believe me, for he wrote about me. But if you do not believe his writings, how will you believe my words? So if you believe Jesus and the Jewish people, then um, we believe that Moses wrote this book. Um, it was written, obviously, in his lifetime, um, in between 1450 and 1410 BC. We have no idea when creation started. No one does. It's pointless even trying to guess. Um, it was written in the original language of Hebrew. Um, now let's dig into the text. This verse is so deep if you look into the Hebrew word meanings and the letter meanings, and I'm not clever enough to understand this yet. However, you may be watching this video, so if you are, I put a few links in the description box um, below, so go and have a read or um, a watch of them in your own time. Sometimes the Bible needs to be read literally. Other times it's written in a poetic sense, like in the book of Psalms, and other times it's written symbolically. And the example of this in John, um, John 10, 9, Jesus says, I am the door. If anyone enters through me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. Obviously, Jesus doesn't mean he's a door. That's just daft to think that he is a door. Um, but in Genesis 1-1, this is a literal text. I have no idea how you can take it any other way than what the text just says. Um, so let's jump into this now. So the first three words in the beginning. Man, this, this is a big one. To us, the beginning means the start of something. However, the beginning here in this sense is the start of creation as God was before the beginning. Um, 
scripture to back this up. Psalm 93 2. Your throne is established from of old. You are from eternity. God doesn't have a start or a finish. He just is. Fascinating. Um, next one. Next two words. God created. The Hebrew word for God here is Elohim, which means a supreme and mighty God. It says he created. He chose to create so he didn't have to. So why did he? Because God is love and he wants an intimate relationship with his creation. Let's now look at some of the characteristics of God. He is creative because he just created. He's the creator, so he's outside of his creation. He's eternal because he was before the beginning. And humans are valuable to him more than the animals. Scriptures about this up as well. Genesis 1, 28 reads, God blessed them and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the sky and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And his essence is love. The next five words, the heavens and the earth. This is the universe and everything in it. This was all created from nothing and spoke into existence. We will get to that later on, but chapter one, um, all the way through this, mentions this. Um, so the first verse of the Bible shows God's ultimate power and authority over creation and proves an intelligent designer behind it all. Do you agree? Now let's try and answer some questions that you watching this now may have or may have asked previously. Number one, who created God? Okay, God wasn't created. Let's think about this logically. If, if we presume that God was created, what would the next question be? Who created the person who created God? Okay, then what would the next question be? Who created the person who created the person who created the person who created God? Do you see where I'm getting at? What does this prove? That someone always had to exist. I have no idea how, because my mind cannot think like that. However, logic proves that this has to be true. Wouldn't you agree? I don't get how anyone can argue with that statement. Um, number two, um, doesn't the Bible contradict science? No. The Bible has always had the same stance for thousands of years. Um, the people who believe it believe in a creator. It's up to science to disprove this claim. Number three, what about evolution? Don't top scientists say that we evolved from monkeys. Um, scripture, just use scriptures about this one up. Genesis 2, 7. Then the Lord God formed the man of the dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living person. Number four, how can God create something from nothing? This is a fantastic question. And this is the main question that people need to ask. <laughs> if you're a non-believer now, let me ask you this. Do you believe that nothing created everything? Let me just repeat that question. Do you believe that nothing created everything? Okay, let me make a claim now. Do you see this painting here? It didn't have a painter. Do you see this painting here? It didn't have a painter. It just appeared. What would you say to that claim? You'd probably be shouting at your phone now, Jamie, you're mental, you're crazy, you've lost it. Why? Because that is scientifically impossible. We need to use this same logic when it comes to creation. Number five, Christians have blind faith. How can they just believe a book? I'm sorry, people, but I'm going to that book to answer this question. Um, Romans 1.20 reads, For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes, that is, his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived, being understood by what has been made, so that they are without excuse.
don't need the Bible to see God's hand in that, do you? I mean, the beauty in creation is unbelievable, mind-blowing. Since when does a Big Bang cause beauty? If you believe in a Big Bang, then honestly, you have more faith than the Christian. And if this is you watching this video now, um, honestly, your mind is not the issue. It's your heart. You don't want it to be true. However, maybe somebody watching this now believes that a God created the universe, which is excellent. However, millions of people believe that a God created the universe. Well, now we're going to make it personal to Christianity and the Bible. Enter the word. This will make sense when I explain it and hopefully it will blow your mind. In the rest of Genesis, um, in chapter 1, the Bible says, God said, for example, in Genesis 1-3 it reads, Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. God is speaking things into existence. Now we're going to cross over to a parallel verse. This is the Gospel of John. And in chapter 1, verses 1 to 3, we read, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and apart from him, not even one thing came into being that has come into being. Let's just review this fascinating text. Notice the parallel with Genesis 1. They both start in the beginning. Um, notice the term word um, this word is a person because he is called he um, he is eternal because he was before the beginning and he is separate from God yet is fully God as we just read so we have two distinct persons before creation um, and he created all things do you know who this person is? And please don't misunderstand what we, we just read. We don't mean there was two gods in the beginning. There's only one God, but there's three persons within. Uh, and we call it the Trinity. I won't explain it now. I might do a video on that next week. Let's read into another text, another fascinating one. Colossians 1, 15 through 17 reads, He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation, for by him all things were created, both in the heavens and the earth, visible and invisible. Whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. That is unbelievable. Let's just clarify or explain a couple of key words. So, by him all things were created. So he created all things, both in heavens and on earth. Let's go back to Genesis 1 1. It ends with, and we're going to go create the heavens and the earth. So this person created all the heavens and the earth. Um, everything was created for him. Sorry, everything was created through him and for him. So it was all created for him. He is before all things. So he always is. And he holds all things together. The universe is in his hand. So the conclusion is this, people. Jesus created the universe. Um, I have no idea how and... Uh, our minds, our human minds will never fully understand. But that is just amazing. Um, and to make it even more amazing, let's now look at um, John chapter 1 verse 14. And the word became flesh. Wait, the word we've just read is Jesus. So Jesus became flesh and dwelt among us humans on earth. And we saw his glory. Glory is the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Have you ever wondered why Christians worship Jesus so much? Are you not in awe, as your mind not been blown by what we have just read? It is uncomprehendable to our uh, human minds. So this is what happened. God the Father planned before the foundation of the world 
that Jesus would become flesh, as we just read, live a perfect life, die a gruesome death to save his people from their sins. And you know the story. Jesus was crucified and rose the third day. Um, Jesus fully complied with the Father and did exactly what the Father asked. All this was done out of pure love for his creation, humans. If you're a non-believer watching this now, thanks for continuing to watch this video. Um, you need to listen what the creator and the sustainer of the universe said. In Mark 1, 14, 15 it reads, Now after John was taken into custody, Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. You need to turn from your sins, ask for forgiveness, put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ alone. Thanks for watching this video, uh, people. I hope you've stayed to the end. I hope you've got something out of it. Personally, this week it's been a real struggle doing this topic because I'm trying to explain the uncomprehendable. <laughs> Our minds cannot wrap our heads around the fact that there was nothing and then there was something. Uh, but hopefully you've learned something and you, you've seen the scripture and you've seen who Jesus really is. Um, so if you like it, consider liking the video or leaving a comment or message me if you've got any questions. I know people are going to have loads of questions and I probably won't be able to answer because I'm not clever enough to do that. But hopefully you enjoyed this video. So stay safe and I'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Bye.